This black magic tool has been sitting on my shelf for almost a year and I've been kicking myself for not breaking this out and setting it up sooner. If you've graduated from HDMI to SDI and now are finding it frustrating to keep all of the cables organized, 2110 could provide a unique solution for streamers without the need to bring fiber into play. Stick with me as I show you a simple setup I'll be incorporating into my live streams, how fast it is to set these units up, and a brief demo of the signals. Fiber optic cables can run for miles, but what about the streamer who simply needs better solutions to run multiple video signals a few hundred feet in a hotel ballroom? Introducing the 2110 3x3G converter. In layman's terms, these 2110 boxes allow you to create a stage box, if you will. Audio experts drop stage boxes that have multiple inputs and outputs, typically by, you guessed it, the stage. Then one cable runs all of the signals back to their audio mixer. In a similar fashion, the 3x3G allows you to run a single 10G capable ethernet cable between the two boxes and it will carry three separate 3G SDI signals over one line in each direction. So box one has three SDI inputs that are 3G compatible up to 1080p at 60 frame. Three looping outputs, meaning each of those inputs can be looped through in the event that you need to send them somewhere else and three SDI outputs. The SDI outputs are where the magic happens because I can route inputs from box one to the three outputs on box two. Box two has the same setup. This means each box can take three feeds in and send three feeds out. That's six different video signals over one ethernet cable. Now, side note to the pros, I realized that the 2110 protocol and IP converters are part of a much larger ecosystem, and I'll be the first to admit this is something that I'm barely dipping my toes into the water on. I'm recognizing this as a solution for intermediate streamers in the configuration that I'll show in this video. The solution we're talking about today will simply be point to point between two 3x3G boxes. Here's a simple overview of each of the boxes in Cable Run. On the left side here, you'll see 2110 box number one. Let's just call this stage box one. And on the right side, you'll see stage box two. The only cable connecting these two boxes is a 10G compatible ethernet cable. I'm using the Peerstone Cat7 double shielded ethernet cable, and I'll link to that down below in the description. One quick note on powering these boxes. You'll need the common IEC power cable that you can find anywhere to power these boxes or in more advanced setups, they can be powered over ethernet. For the purposes of this demonstration, pretend that stage box one or 2110 converter one is back at our home base at our tech table. And box two is set up all the way up at the stage. This means I can send three feeds into box one that should appear as output options on box two up at the stage. Now let's diagram the signals. As a substitute for setting up three different cameras, I'm using Decimator MDHX converters that output a color when they aren't receiving a signal. This way I can output something to show where the signal is going without needing to set up three different cameras at this moment. So when you see cyan, green, or yellow in this setup, pretend that those are video feeds. Video feed Cyan is feeding into SDI input one on stage box one. Video feed Yellow is feeding into SDI input two on stage box one. And then video feed Green is feeding into SDI input three on stage box one. These are all connected using SDI cables from three different decimators to the three by three G. For the purposes of this setup, I'm not looping the signals out, but know that the 2110 converter has a looping output for each input. This means I can loop cyan through input one to looping output one, yellow loops through input two to looping output two, and green loops through input three to looping output three. That's all happening just on box one. This provides flexibility to send cyan, yellow, and green signals to box two at the stage and simultaneously loop them to other devices that are back in my tech table. I'll circle back on why that's important in a moment, but basically it saves you the need to add some sort of splitter in between any of those signals. 
Next, we jump over to the 3x3G box number two, or stage box two, as I'm calling it, which would be up at the stage. This stage box has the same capability, but since it's connected to stage box one, I can now receive all three signals, cyan, yellow, and green, and I only needed to run one single cable between the two boxes. Additionally, if I wanted to, I could input three new signals at stage box two, like magenta, white, and blue, and I could receive those back at my tech table at stage box one. This is why it's such a helpful tool because it's sending three feeds one way and three more feeds the other direction over one single cable. So where does the looping output come into play? Well, let's look at the setup. Hypothetically, I wanna send two confidence monitor feeds to the stage. Maybe one is a full screen slide so that the speaker can read from the slide or call out any visuals. And the other can be presenter view so they can read from any notes. Perhaps the third signal is a multi-view, which is going backstage to my audio team to keep an eye on things as they're miking up speakers, or maybe for a stagehand who is sending people out to the stage. That's my three feeds going from stage box one to stage box two. What if I wanted to feed the multi-view to someone else at my tech table? Normally, I'd have to take another output from my switcher, but this frees up that output since I can use the looping output on box one. Now it's starting to make sense how you'd use the looping outputs. And by the way, I packed two of the 2110 converters, a primary and backup CAT7 cable, and the power IEC cables all into one Nanuk 935 case for easy transport. I'll link to my review of the Nanuk cases somewhere up here in the corner. Since I hadn't opened these in a while, my first step was to connect the 2110 boxes to my computer using a USB-C cable and to upgrade the firmware. That's a quick trip to blackmagicdesign.com, clicking on the support page, selecting broadcast converters, and at the time of recording this, there was a Blackmagic Converters 9.0.2 update. This installed the Blackmagic Converters setup app on my computer, and as soon as I clicked to enter the settings, I was met with a notification to update. Once updated, I made sure to label each input. I chose to go with SDI in 1A, 2A, and 3A for box one, and then SDI in 1B, 2B, and 3B for box two. This will be helpful later when I'm trying to figure out what signals are going where. Then I set the date and time, switch my settings over to DHCP since I won't be putting these on a network, and they're just point to point and left everything else as is. Now the settings are all taken care of, it was time to connect some signals. I can easily select input one, two, or three on the box that all of my signals are coming into. If I want to preview what's routed to the outputs of that particular box, a double tap on any of the numbers shifts the mode to preview outputs, and you'll see a visible icon change in the top right corner to represent outputs. I've confirmed all three signals are going into box one. Now let's shift gears to box two. On box two, I'll press the menu button to enter the menu system. And it's here that I can route the signals from SDI input 1, 2, or 3 from box 1 to the outputs of 1, 2, or 3 on box 2. Right now, my monitor is displaying output 1 from box 2. So you can see as I cycle between the settings, I can route any of the three feeds from box 1 to any of the three outputs on box 2. If you're sending three video signals the other direction, the same instructions apply for setting outputs on box 1. So this begs the question, what's the delay? And shout out to Brandon and his channel, Live Production Mastery. He did a test with an LED wall and saw maybe two or three frames of delay. I'll have to do a real delay test in a different video, but for now, it's worth noting that this is a great solution for sending more static signals like PowerPoint slides or a multi-view where a frame-by-frame -frame sync is not as crucial. The fact that we can use one single Cat7 cable to make all of this happen is a big money saver. The 3G boxes are under $600, and the CAT7 cables are around $25 per 100 feet. If you were trying to send six signals over fiber optic with all of the converters, you certainly wouldn't be spending under $1,300 for the full kit. That might get you a single channel of fiber converted back to SDI, but it'll cost way more. I'm seeing this type of 2110 setup being useful for people in my situation. You're streaming events ranging from 200 to 500 attendees in conference venues and ballrooms, and you want to simplify your cable runs. 
This past year, Blackmagic also released additional 2110 converters, like the presentation converter designed for sitting at a lectern and connecting computers, projectors, microphones, and more. The 2110 ecosystem will certainly make things interesting moving forward, and I'm looking forward to using them in my setup to reduce all of the cable runs. Feel free to check out the description down below for links to everything that I use today. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.